TikTok and beyond, and welcome to Roll for Sandwich, the series where I let fate decide my lunch. Let's go. Today's episode of Roll for Sandwich is sponsored by Dimension. Dude, this guy farms his paid sponsorships, and I'm in for it. Their new six episode it. miniseries, The Ravening War, will be taking us back to the land of Calarum and is being DM'd by none other than Matt Mercer. It's coming out May 10th exclusively on Dropout TV. Today on Roll for Sandwich, we'll be taking our own trip through Calarum, starting in Ceresia. Let's roll for our bread. Five, 12 grain. Is there a 13 grain bread? What's the maximum number of I'm grains you can have in bread. a bread? From Ceresia, we head west into the Meatlands to pick our main for the sandwich. The Meatlands. Let's see what we roll. 11 barbecue pork. Got our barbecue pulled pork heated up here. Gonna spread it out over our bread and hope that it doesn't get too soggy. Off the southern coast of the Meatlands, we head to the Dairy Islands. The Dairy Get Islands. Dude, I Here. would be the king of the Dairy Islands. Here we go, rolling for cheese. One spray cheese. Oh! No, no. The cheese rises above its station for us today. From the Dairy Islands, we move all the way south to Vegetania for our first roughage roll. Vegetania. D6 for our veggies today. Five spinach. I think the spinach here might provide us with a little bit of structure and a little bitterness. Let's hope the bulb shines on this sandwich. Next, we move north to Frutera for our second roughage roll, which will be all fruit options. Here goes nothing. Wait, the Dairy Islands is ruled by Duchess Cold Bottle, who is a bottle of milk. You cannot rule. I will drink that shit the f*** up. One And raisins. I will claim my rightful you know, place on the throne. Too bad. A lot of barbecue sauces have raisin extract in them to kind of give them that sweetness. So this could work. And lastly, we will come to rest in the kingdom of Candia, where we will follow the sweetening path and add a little bit of wild... Candia. I thought this said Canada. I'm not going to lie. Let's do it. <laughs> oh. 12. Pop Rocks. No. So look at the science behind how pop rocks no. work. Essentially, it's just solid sugar, solid no. rock candy infused with carbon oh, dioxide. Oh, no. And when you add moisture, it melts the candy coating, releasing the gas. No. Last but not least, we've got the D20 sauce roll. That's going to be a box of doom roll, guys. 15. We've got bourbon barrel mustard. Well, I can tell you one thing. This will definitely go with the pork. Vinegar and the mustard will add some acid, which is good. We needed something to cut that sugar. Pretty solid sauce roll. Let's get our sandwich closed up here. The pop rocks are just... Oh, to hold no. together. And let's go ahead and take a look at that cross section. You can literally hear it crackling. Dude, Definitely it's already crackling? Today, what? But not the most frightening concoction I've come up with. Let's go ahead and see how it tastes. <laughs> that is... That is a weird sensation. This is actually not that bad. Even though the sandwich has literal candy on it, it didn't end up being too sweet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 7.9, and I'm gonna call it the Call of House Rocks. Thanks again to Dimension 20 for sponsoring this episode. Head on over to their page to check out the new trailer for The Ravening War. Good yeah, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. TikTok and beyond, and welcome to Roll for Sandwich, the series where I let fate decide my lunch. Let's go. The dice that I'm using today comes from Terra Dice. They sent me this white and coppery set, and it's really nice. Thank you. All right, here we go. Let's roll for bread. Two, cherry bread. What? Northern Michigan, especially Traverse City, is known for its cherries. I picked this bread up at my local bakery the other day. It's a thick sliced bread with swirls of cherry and there's even some frost. Wait, it looks fire. on top. I bet it would make killer French toast. Next up, let's roll for our main. One, doc. You know, maybe I, maybe I do go, maybe I should go outside a little bit more. Local bakery looks like that makes some fire shit. Dr. Pepper. Bang. Huh? Wait a minute. Hang on. Am I? What did I? Their French toast. Next up, let's roll for our main. One, Dr. Pepper. Bang. Well, you all have been asking what it is. This is what it is. It's. it's <laughs> what in the f did I just see? Means that tastes like Dr. Pepper. Nah. Up, now we're what in the fucking UK is this? I'm glad this is thick bread. What in the top of the morning is this? Oh, right, I no. All right, cheese now. Six, Red Dragon. Red Dragon is an English cheddar flavored with whole grain mustard and ale. It's got kind of a bite to it, and it's really delicious, which is why this is so painful. I knew the risk going in, but you still hate to see it. What right, in the tally-ho? Red Dragon on top of our Dr. Pepper baked beans. 
Nah, dude. Cherry uh, dude, the Bostonian right. me is so f angry. I'm gonna go throw, throw some tea in the water. Five whiskey cornichons and eleven none. Cornichons are small, crunchy pickles. The British call them gherkins, and these particular ones have been made with whiskey. They're slightly sweet, and you do get those notes of whiskey, though they're not incredibly strong. All right. Oh, I'm this to get looks awful. Awesome. Oh. Thirteen takis. Takis <laughs> are essential. <laughs> How did it get worse? How did it get worse? Spicy chili flavoring on them. These ones have an ungodly amount of blue food dye. They're kind of intense, but tasty by themselves in other contexts. All right. I've never had the blue ones. I've only ever had the red ones, and I thought they were kind of overrated. Last but not least, it's the D20 sauce roll. Five, jalapeno ketchup. This is a dumb <laughs> show. This is a really dumb show. <laughs> Why? This is so dumb. <laughs> put the sandwich together this is an average england uk lunch i guess this is your average uk lunch that we're looking at right now put the toothpicks in and let's cut it in half and let's take a look at that oh god oh, oh my boy. god i hope at least one of you prepared revivify today because i might need it this may be the ugliest sandwich I've made so far. Let's taste it, I guess. No, it bloody isn't. It's literally got a bean base. I... Uh, this is oh. offensive. At least that red dragon is strong and is covering up some of the problems here, but... Uh, I'm having second hand. There's just so much going on and none of bad it Bad taste. I have no choice but to give this one a zero. It's just no redeeming qualities. And I'm going to call this one Bean Hamet. Well, Earl, at least one of us is eating good today. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Aww. TikTok and beyond, and welcome to Roll for Sandwich, the series where I let fate decide my lunch. Let's go. Today, I'm using these peacock dice that belong to my wife. Thanks, honey. Let's get started with our roll for bread. One, fairy bread. Fairy bread fairy is a simple bread. dessert from Australia and New Zealand made by first spreading butter over untoasted white bread and then adding these small colorful sprinkles that they refer to as hundreds and thousands. We call them non perielles or just sprinkles. Starting off interesting today. Is Australia okay? Yeah, are they doing all right? You guys are doing okay down there? Today for sure. Next up, let's roll for our main. Why not just, if you want to go, if you want to go like really Tasty, cheap. Just use butter and like a little sugar. Just let them have it. No, yeah, actually, yes, they can keep it. And Serrano ham. Serrano ham is a dry cured ham that comes from the Pyrenees Mountains of Spain. It's similar to the Italian prosciutto, but it is aged for a longer period of time. That looks fire, it actually. Drier and more intense in flavor. It is salty and rich, as often eaten as a component of tapas. So I haven't far, had prosciutto in years. Dude, there used to be this little Italian deli that was down the street from me when I was a kid. And I'd go down there and they would sell these these little roll-ups with... It, it was called Sharp Provolone. It was some of the most intensely sharp cheese I've ever eaten. And so basically, it was like a little, like a rectangle of it, rolled up in prosciutto and then preserved in like an oil. It was so f good. Oh, I actually think that... It would actually send your bl blood pressure through the roof, though. Two ingredients will balance each other like out. You'd feel yourself, like, you touch Next your up, face and it feels so cheese. flush. It was good. It was Two, fire. provolone. The provolone was a decent roll here. It's going to let the ham... I went back there last year, or a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, after COVID. Because I was like, man, I haven't gone out in a while. Like, you know, I used to love that place. And then I realized every single place next to my house where I grew up is all barred up. Every door and every window is full of bars. And I was like, wow. I guess I didn't realize. <laughs> you take the front seat and support with that little bit of smokiness. Yeah, even the I deli. The deli was... It was literally all barred across. Four I was like, sun -dried oh. sun-dried tomatoes and red onion. I am not the biggest fan of sun-dried tomatoes. I love raw tomatoes, but as you know, I don't like ketchup. Something about the way that the sun drying process changes the flavor of tomatoes. I'm not a big tomato guy. Not one that I jive. So I'm not. They seem to completely take it. over any dish that they're in. Hopefully, that won't be the case here. Now I can see the raw red onion working well with the Serrano ham, but we really won't know until I taste it. All right, next let's roll our wild magic. Six. It's bacon bits. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna add a little bit more salty pork to our salty pork. Whatever you say, Dice. And last but not least, it's the D20 sauce roll. 16 Magnificence. 
This is basically Trader Joe's version of Big Mac sauce. It's most likely got a mayo base. It's a little bit tangy. Tastes like there's some sweet pickle relish in there. Honestly, might not be the worst fit for this one, but we'll see. Let's get our toothpicks in to hold it together and let's get it cut in half. Hmm. And let's take a look at that cross section. It ain't good. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, this one definitely seems like it'll be interesting and definitely not as Trader Joe's in a while. Friday. Let's give it a taste. Go. Well, right off the bat, you can taste that ham. And the sun-dried tomatoes are trying to shine through, but honestly, the butter and the sugar from the sprinkles is kind of mellowing it out a little bit. This actually works way better than expected. It really is funny. You never know what you're going to get with these sandwiches, and things you'd never think to combine sometimes True. just work. It's not the best sandwich I've ever had, but that, it did definitely you? deserves some recognition. And I'm going to give this one an 8.4. And I'm going to call it the Fairies Wear Boots. 8.4. Thanks for joining me today on Roll for Sandwich. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you on Wednesday. I feel like I have to try that bread now. I feel like I have to. Like, it's like a legal obligation at this point, because I shit-talked it. <sighs> TikTok and beyond, and welcome to Roll for Sandwich, the series where I let fate decide my lunch. Let's go. Let's kick things off with our Roll for Bread. Five, white bread. If you're expecting an interesting nugget of trivia or some funny quip, sorry, I got nothing. It's white bread. Next up, let's roll for our main. Or as uh, they call in Germany, apparently, toast. Even though it's just regular bread. Not toasted. Nine, pepperoni. Getting a lot of mileage out of this one bag of pepperoni that I bought. But that's the advantage of cured meats. They last a long time. All right, next up, let's roll for cheese. Six, red dragon. I do like pepperoni. I must issue an apology. The last time I used Red Dragon, I said it was from England. Not to put my local supermarket on blast, but that's what they put on the package. Red Dragon is actually from Wales, and I apologize to all my Welsh viewers. I mean, it makes sense. You have a Red Dragon on your flag. Anyway, glad to have this cheese on the show again, and to give it a second chance to be paired with some better options. Gonna try it. Anyway, glad to have this cheese on the show again, and to give it a second chance to be paired with some better options. I think the bite of the cheddar and the spices and the mustard that it's made with will pair great with this pepperoni. We're only about halfway through making this sandwich, so there are plenty of ways where Looks this can be Looks pretty good so turn, far, though. But I'm hoping for some redemption for our red dragon. All right, let's roll our roughage. One lettuce and three pickled turnips. Got some romaine lettuce today. Definitely not the star of the show, but a welcome addition to the lineup. Pickled My pickled turnips? turnips today are from a local Mediterranean place. They've got that vibrant, natural purple color. They've got a really nice, tangy, and acidic flavor and keep their crunch really well. Anytime I get Lebanese, Syrian, or any other Middle Eastern takeout, I always get extra pickled turnips. And flavor profile-wise, they'll fit just fine in this sandwich. All right, let's roll wild magic. Seven, oregano. Oregano is a Mediterranean staple, so it's right at home with the pepperoni and the pickled turnips. And I recently learned it's part of the mint family, so mm. that's interesting. Last but not least, it's the D20 sauce roll. Here we go. 18, craft beer mustard. All right, well, we've already got mustard in the huh. cheese, so this definitely isn't out of place. I'm, I've never really beer liked will add turnips, a bit of but pickled and turnips complexity. might be good. Let's go ahead and get our sandwich closed up here. Put our toothpicks in to hold it together. And let's Wait. get it cut in half. And let's take a look at that cross section. All right, not too bad, not too bad. It's a website? All right, things seem to have lined up for a better experience with the red Things I learned this today. Time. Let's give it a taste. It looks like it was oh, yeah. pretty good. That's pretty dang good. It's kind of intense, but all of the flavors work together pretty well. It's heavily in that acidic zone, so it maybe could have used something to mellow it out a little bit, but it's pretty good. Probably I'm going to give 9. this one a 9.2. And I'm going to call it Red Dragon's Respite. Thanks for watching Roll for Sandwich today. I hope each and every one of you have an awesome day, and I will see you on Friday. Do you like food flats? No. No, I don't.